Yeah, it was a it was a strong result. I think we saw strength uh, right across the business. Uh, in in fact, you did see Litton impacted with a an outage and certainly lower margins during the uh, the second quarter. But we're really pleased that in terms of the strength and diversity across the business, in terms of fuels and infrastructure, um, our position in New Zealand now, which has grown, or our broader international position, all performed really strongly. So the non-refining uh, earnings contribution uh, for the business is over 80, percent and I think that is a real demonstration of, uh, of strength. We do see uh, we, a strong st start to the second half. So, uh, as you mentioned, refiner margins have started in July at $15.31 a barrel. That's uh, well above historical levels. And we've seen a pretty uh, strong and encouraging start to, uh, to August as well. We're, we're also benefiting in terms of the scale and the volumes coming through the business from the ongoing recovery in aviation in particular. Um, and obviously, uh, New Zealand uh, through Zen Energy a, a full half contribution uh, uh, coming through. So a number of drivers that are giving us some uh, some support and some encouragement for the second half ahead. That's that's exactly what I wanted to ask you about, Matt, in terms of aviation, in terms of jet fuel. You know, we, we have seen recovery in aviation, obviously, but are you worried at all about what the, the macro environment could do, whether or not people are going to continue to travel? Should we see, for example, a, a recession in Australia and what that will do to domestic travel or, you know, the, the situation in the US or Europe in terms of the transatlantic routes? And their own domestic, like more broadly, are you concerned at all? Yeah, I think you'll see a relationship between uh, between you know a softening economy and aviation demand. But I think you know if you take aviation, we still haven't seen a, a recovery full. Uh, fully through to pre-COVID levels. Um, China coming back. Um, migration is certainly back pretty strongly now. Um, as we see Chinese travel coming back uh, and some steps are being taken now that uh, would facilitate that in a more significant way. You can see some stronger countervailing forces that you know our expectation would be we'll continue to see uh, um, some reasonable growth through the recovery in aviation volumes. And um, you know migration, as I mentioned, is another positive driver for uh, for volumes. Right. What about CapEx going forward, Matt? What, what is lined up on that front and how is funding sharing up, uh, shaping up for the same? So the balance sheet's in a really strong position. So we target between two and two and a half times uh, EBITDA as our leverage level. We uh, exited the half uh, at 1.8 times. So we're we're below our settings. The balance sheet is in very strong condition. We've declared a dividend, obviously, at the um, towards the top end of our dividend range uh, that reflects the the strength of that balance sheet, the performance, and indeed the outlook that we've got uh, heading into the second half. Capex we've guided at between 400 and 450 million dollars. Um, uh, we're waiting for the finalisation of uh, fuel specifications to finalise the upgrade that we're progressing um, up, up at the Lytton refinery. That's significant. Uh, we're rolling out the upgrade of some of our really uh, large highway sites. We've just rolled out a couple um, in Sydney at Pheasant's Nest, and they really are marquee sites that will continue to progress through um, other highway sites, particularly around Sydney, um, as we look out uh, for the rest of this period. So that's a couple of the, the drivers of, uh, of the CapEx estimation that we've got for the balance of this year.